let's draw a graph. Here it is. And notice that it's planar. But what happens if we keep on adding new edges to this graph while maintaining its property of being planar? Let's see what happens. We'll keep the old graph still in blue and add all of our new edges in red. We want to keep on adding red edges as long as they're not crossing any other edges and just keep going until we're forced to stop. So this is what happens. We end up with this graph here. If we add any new edge, the graph will no longer be a plane graph. So that is what's called a maximal plane graph. It also happens to be a maximal planar graph, and this is a plane graph drawing of it. Furthermore, if you look at any of the regions in this graph, you'll see that all of their boundaries are triangles, even the exterior region. So this is also sometimes called a triangulation. Here is another example. We'll start with this green plane graph, and then we'll add edges until we get a new graph which is a triangulation of the old graph. So for example, we can add in these blue edges and now we're stuck. We can't add any more and we have a triangulation. Our green graph had five vertices. So I could have predicted that after making it a triangulation, we would end up with nine edges. I'm not making this prediction using any magic. I actually know that for a maximal plane graph, there is a direct formula telling you how many edges it will have based on the number of vertices. So let's take a look at that theorem. We are going to prove that if G is a maximal planar graph on N vertices, where N is at least three and M edges, then M is equal to three times N minus six. To prove this, take a plane drawing of G on R regions and notice that the boundary of every region is a triangle. Now, consider taking the number of edges on the boundary of region R and summing this up over all of the regions R in this plane drawing. Well, obviously there are little r number of regions and each of those sees exactly three edges in its boundary. So this sum will equal three times R. Pretty straightforward. But now, Think about the sum on the left hand side and notice that each edge belongs to the boundary of two regions. So in that sum, each edge gets counted twice, once for each of those regions. That means that the sum just counts all of the edges twice. In other words, it's equal to 2m. Now we have a relationship between r and m. We also know that the graph is a plane graph. So it must satisfy Euler's formula for plane graphs. In other words, n minus m plus r has to equal two. But now we have a relationship telling us what r is in terms of m. So we'll just plug that in. And when we simplify and rearrange it, you get exactly that three times n minus six equals m. So you can tell exactly the number of edges that will be in a maximal plane graph on n vertices. And the proof is done. A corollary of this result is if G is a planar graph with N vertices where N is at least three, then the number of edges M is less than or equal to three times N minus six. This makes sense because a maximal plane graph is going to have as many edges as you possibly could have in a plane graph on N vertices. So it makes sense that if you just have any old planar graph, it will be bounded above by that number. But let's take a look at a more formal proof. So we have our planar graph G and we add edges to G until the resulting graph G prime is maximal planar and has M prime edges. We know from the previous theorem that M prime equals three times N minus six because the number of vertices hasn't changed. But obviously, m is less than or equal to m prime, and therefore, m is less than or equal to three times n minus six, and the proof is done. So in this video, we've learned about maximal planar graphs and exactly how many edges they have to have. This told us something about plane graphs in general. If you'd like to check out related videos, click here, and I'll see you next time.